what's up guys my name is Zach and today I am driving a 1994 Toyota Tercel up front is a 1.5 liter inline four and down below is a four-speed manual transmission now I am super excited to be driving this Tercel because this is only the second Tercel that I've driven here on the channel I absolutely love the 1986 four-wheel drive Tercel that I reviewed several years ago you'll find that video on my channel and at the end of this video but it's always good to be back in a 90s Toyota it's one of my favorite eras from one of my favorite manufacturers and so we're gonna dive into the 94 Tercel today but if you would like to submit your own vehicle and have it reviewed here on the channel just like this Tercel you can head on over to my website zachcradle.com slash submit but let's get back to that 1.5 liter inline four well, in the grand scheme of automobiles, it's a reliable engine, but in terms of Toyota, not so much. These seem to have valve issues and head gasket issues, of which this car has had both of already repaired. And so there's a reason why we don't really see these on the road that much anymore, and especially for a 90s Toyota, because these engines are the weakest point of the car. Now this one is the single overhead cam that makes about 82 horsepower, and so it's not much, but it is an honest little car, and I can't hate on it. Like I said, paired to it is a four-speed manual transmission. However, in all fairness, this car has had a transmission swap actually last week. And so it was the three-speed automatic, but the owner, Andrew, opted to put in a four-speed manual. Now, this is a true and proper Tercel manual transmission, just not the one that came outfitted from this exact car from the factory, just so you know. The manual transmission is incredibly simple and lovely to drive. The clutch is super light. The throw is nice and direct, even after hundreds of thousands of miles. And although it is a four speed, which you could have opted for a five speed in the era as well, four speed isn't fantastic, but it's not bad either. And I enjoy driving it around. Last but not least about the Tercel is the fact that of course it is front wheel drive. So how does it feel to drive a 1994 Toyota Tercel? Well, everything is light, airy, and fun. It doesn't take much effort to get it going. It doesn't take much effort to stop it. And it's only a touch over 2,000 pounds, so you really feel that in this car. So with that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have two gauges. Off to the left is my coolant and fuel gauge, and off to the right is my speedometer. That's it. On the steering wheel, I get an airbag and a horn, which still works, but that's it. Off to the left, I have a climate vent. And on the door, I have a crank for the window. In the center, I do get a digital clock. Very nice to see that. That's a nice little luxury item. Two more climate control vents that you can flip around and twist any which way. I love this design. I think it works really well. Then we have our climate controls. So we do have heat and AC, as you can probably tell by the demeanor in my voice and the fact that the windows are down. The AC has stopped working, but here it is laid out all very simply. Down below, we do have our Toyota radio, cassette player, AM, FM, all you really needed in 94, and our rear defrost, kind of an interesting placement there. Then we do have some shelves, an ashtray, 12 volt outlet, and cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test, but of course it fails because most 90s cars do anyway. <laughs> Then we do have the shifter. Like I said, it has recently had a transmission swap to a four-speed manual. And of course, this is not the factory shift knob. That would be absolutely wild, but here it is. Then we have the parking brake. Doesn't work, but it's here. And then we'll talk about the seats. The seats are nice and comfy. That is what I absolutely love about this era and this generation of Toyota. And just this era of cars is that even though this was the most affordable Toyota you could buy at the time, the seats were still comfy. And this goes for a lot of other manufacturers in the 90s as well, not just Toyota. But 90s seat comfort is still unmatched here today. So it's nice to see that here in the Tercel. However, we do have back seats, so let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 1994 Toyota Tercel, and a couple of things to note. First of all, headroom 
you know, with my sunglasses on, I'm starting to come a little close to the ceiling, but not the end of the world. Knee room is actually okay. This is my driving position, and my knees aren't hitting the seat in front of me unless I want them to. The interior packaging of the Tercel is one of its strong points because, yes, this is an economy car. Yes, this is a subcompact. Yes, this is tiny, 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 but you don't feel like it's tiny, 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 especially from back here as a college car getting to and from campus, going off campus for a lunch or dinner or event or whatever. Ever, you're gonna be able to take your friends back here it's not going to be that big of a deal which is really really nice would I want to spend 12 hours back here driving to Syracuse New York no but that's okay it's nice for what it is you know obviously grading on a curve of economy cars this ain't so bad let's hop out we'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space and then we'll talk about the looks right around the back of the 94 Tercel and I had to pop the trunk from the inside I could show you where that is just real quick right there just down by the fuel cap release reason I had to do that is because a previous owner or someone tried to get in and uh, kind of screwed up the lock so there's that once we are in the trunk, nothing really too crazy, but it does take advantage of going all the way out to either side. So wide objects are gonna be nice. Nice low loading floor as well. You don't have to lift objects up and in as much. And honestly, in terms of a modern trunk, this is great, but 90s cars were always better about this packaging. Of course, at the deficit of crash protection, but hey, that's okay. Here's the rear trunk space of a 94 Tercel, in case you were curious. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and I like this light blue, but it is a very simple look, which I like as well. 90s Toyotas are really simple in not only the way that they drive, but the way that they look. And when you have a car that's very simple, it feels very honest to the users. It doesn't feel like they're trying to fluff you up in any way, and that's how this exterior looks. It doesn't feel like Toyota's trying to pull a fast one and say, oh, look at this sporty car, and then you get behind the wheel and it's not sporty. No, they say, hey, look at this honest little affordable vehicle, and it looks like an honest little affordable vehicle. So, good stuff there from the Toyota Motor Corp. However, with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving a 1994 Toyota Tercel. Well, I still love this era. I love this era of cars. I love this era of simplicity. All of that together makes this car a lot of fun and a joy to drive. However, if we peel the curtain back and take a look at Tercels as a whole, this might be one of the least reliable Toyotas of the 90s. Now, that's of course graded on a scale because this is still pretty reliable and the owner drove it two hours home on only two cylinders. Show me a Chevy, Chrysler, or Ford product that could do that. But with the engine issues, the Tercel started to hurt the Toyota name just a little bit, and so they gave it one more generation after this, but then they pulled the plug. They ended up importing the Toyota Vios as the Toyota Echo for the American market, which replaced the affordable Toyota in their lineup. So we still have vehicles that were on sale at the same time as this, like the Camry and Corolla, but they were more reliable and so those names got to stick around. The Tercel, or as many online forum posts have named it, the Turd Cell, wasn't so lucky. And so although it was really affordable at the time and had good features for what it was, it just wasn't completely up to Toyota's standards. So that's why there's no chance of me receiving a 2024 Toyota Tercel press car or reviewing one much after the 90s because it didn't make it past the 90s. But for what it is, it's actually kind of fun to drive. I'm not mad in that regard. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Andrew for letting me take out his Toyota Tercel. Andrew's been a wonderful friend, not only to me, but for the channel. I've reviewed tons of his vehicles throughout the last several years, and this is just his latest acquisition, and I appreciate him very, very much. But, <clears throat> excuse me. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.